ear is too stiff, causing so-called flyaway ears. This is not desirable. These rose ears are correct, small, thin, and set well. The correct Staffordshire Bull Terrier's expression is a combination of attitude, eye shape and placement, and the make and shape of the head. That is the essence of the breed. Now let's discuss the Staffordshire Bull Terrier's neck and body. The neck is muscular like this and rather short. It is clean in outline and gradually widens toward the shoulders. This neck is of proper length, in keeping with the overall proportions of the dog. You can see how it gradually widens to the shoulders, which are well laid back. The front assembly should be powerful and well muscled, without appearing coarse. The Safford's front assembly can be described as four square. That is, the width of the front from elbow to elbow is the same as the distance from elbow to ground. You can see that the legs are straight and well boned and set rather far apart because of the ample rib spring and wide chest. Elbows are held close to the body. This front is incorrect. The chest is too narrow. The distance between the front legs and the distance from chest to ground should be equal. And this dog's upright shoulders are not desirable. The upper arm is much too short. These shoulders are correctly angulated with upper arms of equal length and angled well back so that the legs are set well under the body. The shoulders are well muscled without appearing coarse. This front is more bully. The elbows are out and the legs are not straight. The dog's pasterns are weak. From the front, you can see there is no looseness at the shoulder. Also note the strong pasterns. This is important to the Stafford's characteristic agility. There must be no weakness of pastern. See how the feet turn out slightly. This is correct for the breed. These pasterns are correct from the side. The feet themselves are strong, well padded, and of medium size. They are neither a cat nor a hare foot, but are circular in shape with strong, well arched toes. Dew claws on the front feet may be removed. The Stafford's body is close coupled with a level top line and well sprung ribs. Note the deep brisket extending to the elbow. The length of body is in the ribbing and not in the loin. The coupling is the loin area between the rib cage and the pelvis. In proportion, the length of back from withers to tail set is equal to the distance from withers to ground. Although this bitch has a lovely top line, she is too long in back and flat in croup. This dog's body is correctly proportioned with a level top line and well sprung ribs. Note also that the loin area is somewhat tucked up and rather light in contrast to the rest of the body. This is important to the agility and fitness of the Stafford. Looking at the dog from above, the body forms an hourglass shape with a definite waist at the loin. The tail is an extension of the spine and low set. It is undocked and of medium length, tapering to a point reaching no further than to the hock. It is carried rather low, like this one. It should not curl much and can be likened to an old-fashioned pump handle. This tail is too short. Tails which do not taper to a tip or which are too straight are not desirable. This tail is carried too high. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier's hindquarters are well muscled like these, with hocks let down and stifles well bent. The well bent stifle is another important component of the Stafford's power and athletic ability, 
and functions like a coiled spring. See how the rear angulation is in balance with that of the front. This dog is too straight in the rear. While this one is over-angulated. This is the correct rear angulation with well-muscled thighs and well-bent stifles. Seen from the rear, this weak rear is incorrect. This dog lacks muscle and is out of condition. From the rear, there should be good muscling in rump and thigh. There is a straight column of support. The hocks are parallel, turning neither in nor out. Whether the dog is standing or moving, cow hocks or sickle hocks are incorrect. Rear feet, like the front feet, are well padded, strong, and circular in shape. They are of medium size, like these, with the toes close and well arched. Dew claws, if any, on the rear legs are generally removed. Now let's discuss the Staffordshire Bull Terrier's coat. It is smooth, short, and close to the skin. The Stafford's coat should never be trimmed, nor should whiskers be removed from the foreface. As for color, the standard allows for red, fawn, solid white, black, or blue, or any of these colors with white. Any shade of brindle or brindle with white is also allowed. Whatever the color, the coat should be brilliant and in good condition. Throughout this presentation, you have seen dogs of all the colors. Black and tan coats or liver coats are to be disqualified. The Stafford's movement should be free, powerful, and agile, with no wasted motion. There should be good reach in front and drive from the rear, like this. From the front, the legs should move straight ahead, never being thrown out to the side. There should be slight convergence to a central line as speed increases. And from the rear, there should also be slight convergence. The rear drive should be readily discernible. This dog has a spraddled rear. He is tracking too wide. This dog, however, is cowhocked. This dog toes in while gating. while this one's front legs do not move straight ahead, and they are much too close together. Here again is correct movement. Free, powerful, with no restriction, like a rhino on a slow charge. See how the top line remains firm and level. Judges should always keep in mind the Staffordshire Bull Terrier's dual ancestry. Some dogs will tend toward the more bully traits of this heritage, while others will display more terrier-like qualities. Breed type is exemplified in the head. The ideal specimen will fall midway between the extremes of type and will combine the bulldog's strength and courage with the terrier's tenacity and agility. The result is a sound, powerful, athletic dog with a friendly, outgoing disposition. Indeed, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier combines the best of both worlds. <laughs>